Up next, we have the civil engineering group, Horace Concrete. Rodriguez and I'm from San Antonio, Texas. My name is Eric Wilson and I'm from Elizabeth, New Jersey. Uh, my name is Aito Aquinabe and I'm from Rolla, Missouri. My name is Miles Heath. I'm from Philadelphia. I'm Eliana Figueroa and I'm from Houston, Texas. And we're the Stretcher Group and in the past two weeks we've been focusing on concrete for storm water management. This is a brief overview of our presentation. Um, we, uh, we mostly are going to be focusing on the problem statement, background types of concrete, concrete mixing, tests, and results. So within the past two weeks, we focused on the study of the civil engineering discipline. And through our experiments, we were able to come, over, come up with an overall problem statement, which uh, entails water runoff in urban areas is a problem due to increased demand on the sewage system. As a way of stormwater management, porous concrete can be used to reduce, to reduce total runoff. Um, there's some background information. Uh, Philly's current sewer system is a combined system of both storm and wastewater. Um, the wastewater system holds more than 3,000 miles of sewage pipes. And then the stormwater management is on the rise for its operating cost and its annual budget is around $120 million. Throughout our project, we talked about several different types of concrete. The three different types of concrete we talked about are conventional concrete, porous concrete, and fiber reinforced porous concrete. Uh, the most commonly known and used form of concrete is, is conventional concrete. Um, there are five main ingredients in conventional concrete, which are coarse aggregate, fine aggregate, cement, water, and air. Um, coarse aggregate is stone and fine aggregate is sand. Some real life applications of conventional concrete are water management and infrastructure in buildings such as bridges, um, skyscrapers, and dams such as the Hoover Dam on the right hand side. Some of the pros of conventional concrete is that it has very high strength, it's good for infra infrastructure, and it's also great in compression. Uh, some of the cons of conventional concrete is that it has low absorption properties, and it also causes a significant amount of water runoff. Water runoff is the flow of excess water on Earth's surface <coughs> because the soil can't absorb the water fast enough. Porous concrete is made of coarse aggregate, which is stones, cement, and water. Um, since there's no fine aggregate, which is sand, the porous concrete has voids in it, which allows water to seep through it so it gets drained. On um, real life applications, you'll see uh, porous concrete in places with uh, high precipitation. Pro for a porous concrete is you can use it in water management for a lot of places like parking lots and sidewalks, especially parking lots because parking lots are flat and they tend to flood a lot so the porous concrete will allow the water from precipitation to seep through it and drain easily. But a con for it will be because of the voids in it, it would be relatively weak for like heavy traffic such as trucks and it breaks into many pieces when it actually breaks. And here's a video of porous concrete in action. Notice how the water is now accumulating and is immediately being seeped through the concrete. So just like what Ita said, uh, porous concrete is concrete that doesn't have a uh, fine aggregate, which is sand. So these voids uh, allow water or any type of liquid to seep through. Fiber reinforced porous concrete 
uh, is with the addition of what's called polypropylene fibers. What you see on the right is these white fibers that toughen the concrete and prevent uh, cracks from growing. Uh, overall, it allows, it increases the strength and real applications today allows concrete to be more durable and some of the pros are strength. Now we're going to talk about the process of mixing the concrete. Um, as you can see, there are different parts for uh, the two different concretes that we make, conventional and porous. Um, and parts are basically proportions that we use in concrete. So say you're making a small batch of concrete, you're still going to have the same amount of parts or uh, percentages as if you're making a big batch of concrete. So for our project, um, in conventional concrete, we had three parts of coarse aggregate, two parts of fine aggregate, one part of cement, and 0.4 parts of water. And then for porous concrete, we had 4.67 parts of coarse aggregate, no parts of fine aggregate, which is the sand, one part of cement, and again, 0.4 parts of water. Uh, the procedure for mixing the concrete. So first, we weighed the raw ingredients in buckets and used the scale to do, this, do so. Uh, then we dry mixed the cement and the sand together. Then after that, we added the water and mixed it again. On the left, this is a picture of us retrieving the materials from outside and placing them in the buckets. The second picture is a picture of us dry mixing the sand and cement. And then the final picture is after we added the water. Um, after we gathered our uh, materials, we uh, put it all in a bucket. And then we put in this tray right here. and. We dry mix the cement and stone first, and then after we mix it up, we'll mix it again with water. And this is what it looks like after it's all done. So this is the fiber reinforced uh, concrete. And so as you can see, these are the polypropylene fibers. They're, uh, you can describe them as like cotton balls, but like broken up. And so once we broke them up, they went into this bin and we were able to mix them together and you come out with the final product which is like hairy concrete. Uh, it's used to um, develop strength within the concrete and uh, when uh, made and batched together it takes 28 days for the entire cycle and for the stiffness to grow. Uh, Within the first seven days of making the concrete, it uh, takes on 70% of its total strength, but within the course of 28 days, it then uh, takes on full strength. Okay, so the vibrating table is an instrument we use to take out all the air bubbles from the uh, cement. And it like strengthens it strengthens after the air bubbles are gone. So, it's a little video. <laughs> okay, tension is when is an object being pulled apart. Compression is when it's being pushed in. And some real life applications will be service load, and minimum capacity, infrastructure, and safety factor. Now we're going to talk about the testing results of the project we conducted. Uh, we made concrete cylinders with the three types of concrete we talked about, conventional, porous, and fiber reinforced porous. And the cylinders we made were four inches in diameter and eight inches in height. Um, so the procedure for doing so. Uh, first, we place the cylinders in the machine, which is called the Forney Concrete Cylinder Test Machine, which we'll show you next. Uh, then we applied load to the cylinders, and after that, we, uh, we tested the load and displacement, and all the data was recorded on a computer. So this is the Forney Concrete uh, Cylinder Test Machine, and at the top, this is, what, uh, the, this is how the load is being applied. And then on the right-hand side, there's a keypad so we can change the settings. And then also on the bottom, uh, we change the settings of how fast or slow this would move down. 
And then these are just two quick pictures of the tension test that we conducted. On the left hand side is conventional concrete in tension. And as you can see, it stayed fairly together. And uh, just so you know, the concrete's replaced sideways. And that's how the tension was applied. And then uh, on the right, the porous concrete broke into many pieces. Unlike the te tension test uh, for the compression test, we put the cylinders up vertically and then we uh, used the machine to apply load to it from the top to compress it down together. Um, this was a result from the conventional concrete, porous and fiber reinforced porous concrete. Notice how the porous concrete over here broke into many pieces after it was compressed. So I'm going to share with you some of the data that we collected over our past two weeks. So this graph represents the compression rates, which is the force going into an object. Um, as you can see here, this blue line represents conventional concrete. The two red lines shown here and here are our porous uh, fiber reinforced concrete, and the two yellows are our porous concrete. Overall, we were able to uh, find out that conventional concrete has, the greater has a greater compression rate over the two porous concrete. Um, our second highest was porous concrete and our lowest was um, the porous with fiber reinforced concrete. Our conventional concrete was able to hold a maximum of 40,000 pounds um, next, the porous concrete was able to hold roughly between 20,000 to 25,000 pounds of force. And lastly, our porous with fiber reinforced concrete was hold, able to hold 10 to 15,000 pounds. Um, the reason why this um, line shown here is not with the rest of the data is because um, when making concrete, uh, there are some variables, so um, we were able to conclude that maybe we weren't able, we weren't able to make um, a, cor a correct and more accurate batch of the porous uh, fiber reinforced concrete. Next is tension, which is uh, the force pulling outward on a given object. Um, in red shown is our conventional concrete. Again, it is um, high in tension. Next is our porous uh, fiber reinforced concrete, which was able to hold um, between 10,000 to 15,000 pounds of load. And next was our porous without the fiber, polypropylene fibers. Um, again, this is not with, with the rest of our um, data because, again, uh, it was exper experimental and our batches weren't as accurate as it could have been. Here you can see a graph comparing the compression and tension of conventional concrete. The, com um, the batch of concrete we made, the compression load was, load was about 40,000, but the tension um, load was around 20,000. Um, so you can see that it is significantly lower and in reality, the compression load is usually 10 times as much as the tension load. This is um, the com a chart of the compression and tension of fiber reinforced porous concrete. And we have the same situation where the compression load is way higher than the um, tension load, which is what we expected from the beginning. We also uh, conducted a concrete flow rate test in, in this test, you take cylinders and you leave your concrete in there and you place the cylinders between two wood beams. Then you pour water into them and you watch the water seep through and um, collect how much time it takes. So in our fiber reinforced porous concrete, it took the water took about 20 seconds to seep through. And in our porous concrete, it took around 40 seconds. And in the conventional concrete, it didn't go down at all. And
So as you can see from the top view in the left, the fiber porous concrete, the water is going down, but in the porous it's going down, but it's going down slower. And in the conventional, it doesn't go down at all. Another aspect we talked about was design considerations. For design, we limit the load level to a fraction of the ultimate load, and this is where the factor of safety come in, comes in. A great example of this would be an elevator. In an elevator, it's posted that the maximum load is like around 4,000, 4, but in reality, it can hold up to three times that amount, so that would be around 12,000. But if a little more load is applied when in the elevator, it is still safe to ride on, so that's why this is important. So, in conclusion, um, if we were to do further studies, uh, we would have changed the ratios of the materials used to make the concrete. Uh, we were able to conclude that conventional concrete was uh, at the greatest compression rate, and porous concrete with the fibers drains the water the best. On our behalf, we would like to thank Dr. Hampton and Sergio for helping us through our learning experience of civil engineering, as well as Dr. Jones and the rest of the lead staff for having or allowing this program to be possible. Thank you. Are there any questions at all?